Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're talking about a new pistol that was recently put out by Lipsys, the Glock P80 Retro Pistol. We're going to go into a little bit of background right now on what the P80 pistol, uh, where it came from. The Austrian Army utilized the Walther P38 pistol for many, many years after World War II. Now, the P38 and the Browning High Power really redefined the semi-automatic military combat pistol by utilizing the double action manual safety. The Browning High Power pistol, you also had the, the Browning Linkless locking barrel. Now, the Walther P38 was, again, an excellent pistol, very heavy, uh, and Austrian Army wanted to modernize. So Glock started off as a company that was manufacturing things such as entrenching tools, non disintegrating machine gun belts, hand grenades, and so forth. They'd heard about the solicitation for the new Austrian combat pistol, and that was in 1980. And in 1982, uh, Glock had formed a panel of experts to find out what the criteria would be for this new pistol. And there were many manufacturers who were very established. You know, you had you had uh, Sig in there, you had HK in there, you had uh, Steyr, and you had Beretta. You know, combat pistols that have been proven throughout the years. Uh, Mr. Glock, who had absolutely no idea about manufacturing pistols, he had no experience in it, so he was really thinking out of the box with a new, with a whole new thought of utilizing polymer. And the first pistol that was produced was the Glock 82. The Glock 82 was the first prototype Glock pistol that was tested by the Austrian Army. And we would later know that as the Glock Gen 1. The Glock pistol used a pebbled type of a, of a grip on the, on the frame, polymer frame, which was very revolutionary at the time. At the time, the only time we had seen a polymer frame was on the, was on the HK VP70, which... Although the design was sound, uh, it was not very well received due to the fact that it had a horrid trigger, more like a staple gun than an actual handgun. Uh, but Glock was the first one to introduce a polymer frame successfully, and it really, it completely uh, took over the industry and redefined what a combat pistol was. And the pistol had a 17-shot magazine. Now, we talk about the model Glock 17. We had first the Glock 82, which was the prototype, and then the Glock, it was named the Glock 17. The Glock 17 came from, it was the Glock 17th patent. Contrary to popular belief, people thought because it held 17 rounds, it was the Glock 17. No, it was actually his 17th patent. So as the pistol went into service is the Glock model P80. So Glock has not done anything in retro uh, ever. There's never been really designed now. Lipsys, uh, which is the manufacturer who they've done several sh uh, specific runs of various types of, you know, the Vickers series and, and so forth, uh, the 17Ms. Um, there's m many of their retro type, type guns uh, or guns that were very significant, such as the 17M. Roughly two weeks ago, they had introduced the new P80. Now, the P80 is Glock's first retro gun. Now, when we look, look at this firearm, we see a lot of the original Glock 17 or Glock 82 in it, but we also see quite a bit of the modern Gen 3 uh, in it as well. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at it and show some of the differences. Now, the original PD pistol, which was adopted by the Austrian Army, was the Gen 1. There was another country who also adopted it, and that was the Norwegian, as we're going to see from the phonograph, the way the Norwegian guns were marked. And then we'll also take a look at how the original PAs were marked. Uh, PAs basically had... You know, the P80 designation that was on there, but it also had the sign of the Austrian Army, which was a circle with an upside down triangle. And that would be found on the slide. It would be found also on the frame down near where it said Glock. So when you take a look at the P80 pistol, it's one of those things that's very much so like uh, several of the other guns who have been recreated throughout the years of military pistols. You're there, but you're not quite there. Uh, there's a lot of additional things that could have been done uh, that wouldn't have been cost effective. But due to the fact that the MSRP is about $670 for this pistol, uh, I guess myself, I wouldn't, I'm not too concerned about some of those changes because this pistol here is not a true commemorative in the fact that because of the cost, this can be used as a target pistol. It's not necessarily just a collector's pistol. There are people who would buy this. For instance, this is the reason why I have this is because it is a collector's pistol. Uh, I tend to have, as you see from here, uh, I have pretty much all the Generation 17s. I have the Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I have a 17M here as well. Uh, so I tend to want to collect uh, you know, all the Model 17s myself. So taking a look at the pistol, what we're going to do is we're going to go from top to bottom and we're going to see what's the same and what's different. So first off, we're going to take a look at the frame. When you look at the frame compared to the original Glock Gen 1 frame, there are some differences. Uh, if you notice the way the pebbling is, how far it goes up on the Gen 1 versus the P80, it goes up a, you know, quite a bit higher. Now, you would think that all they had to do was take their original molds and 
and redo it. Well, no, Glock had not had uh, their their old molds. They had refurbished them uh, and used them for other purposes. So they actually had to recreate the original mold, which they did an excellent job on. Uh, so you can see we have the pebbling on the on the on the on the, on the grip. We also have the pebbling on the front of the mag of the trigger guard as well. We have the standard trigger trigger, which is a smooth trigger, which is what came out on the original Gen 1s. We have the smaller magazine release, which came on those as well. Now looking at the slide, the slide what we have here is a Gen 3 slide. Uh, instead of having it being the time for finish of the original Gen 1, which is no longer in production, this is the NDLC finish. For as far as the sights are concerned, it does have the original plastic sights on there as well, which is what came with it. We look over to the right hand side, main changes is that we have the original flat extractor instead of the one that utilizes the, uh, the the bump on it so you can tell if it's loaded so it's not a live, live cartridge indicator or a loaded chamber indicator. So when you look at the Glock on here, the original Glock pistols did not have the Glock at the, on the side. Now you also notice the original Glocks had all kinds of proof marks on the right hand side of the barrel and on the uh, slide. The P80 does, does not have that. It has basically the exact markings that you would see on a current production pistol, so the, the barrel would not be what you would consider current, or would be considered current. It wouldn't be considered really a retro the way that it's marked. It does have P80 marked on it. It does have the original polygon rifling. It does not have the new marksman barrel on it at all. What I have installed in this pistol is an original Gen 1 magazine, which I had in my collection. Now, the major differences between the two... The original Gen 1 magazine was not designed as a drop-free. Uh, it was designed that way, where, of course, in the United States, we want them to drop-free. The Gen 2 magazines have a metal liner in here, which allows it to be allows it to drop-free. So this was designed for the commercial market, the American market, because we do not accept the non-drop-free magazines. But the Austrian Army did request a, a non-drop-free magazine so that it wouldn't be lost. So we take the pistol apart. It's like any other Glock. It's like the original Glock. Looking at the frame, we have the standard trigger trigger mechanism that was utilized in the Gen 2 through Gen 4. The original Gen 1's had was more of a blackish color trigger group that there was a problem with it, it uh, firing if it was dropped. So there was some modifications that were made to the trigger mechanism, and it was offered as an upgrade. In fact, I can recall in 1991-92 time period when I was working with Laser Max, I was one of the Rochester authorized uh, refurbishment or doing the uh, upgrades. So basically what you would have to do is you would send the serial number to Glock of the pistol that you had. They would send you the new components and you would install them for the customer and then you would send those parts back. Uh, and that was the, the early uh, Glock pistols. It also got into the, some of the Gen 2s as well. So there's there are all serial number ranges. So this does have the modern Gen 3 and Gen 4 trigger mechanisms in it. For the most part, the, the frame is a very good rendition of it. However, another change that was on it, the original Glock pistols did not have the serial number plates on them. The original Glocks and all the ones that went to the Austrian military, the frame and the slot, the frame does not have the serial number on it. It's, that's not what's, what's named as the firearm. The firearm is basically the barrel and the slide. So on the original Glock 17s and the P80s that were sent to the Austrian army, they did not have a serial number on the frame. Now looking at the slide, we do have the current production captured recoil spring where in the original gen ones you had a two piece that was not captive and then of course the barrel uh, this is all ndlc finish rather than tenifer as we stated before but the, the the slide is basically your gen 3 it has your glock on the side here now the p80 now originally the austrian austrian pistols would have a circle with an upside down triangle and on the uh, norwegian ones you would have the norwegian arsenal symbol which we showed you in pictures we're going to show you again so if you want to do a comparison between the two pistols, the original Gen 1. Now this original Gen 1 uh, was one of the earlier ones that came into the United States, probably. I think this one was around uh, 1987, this pistol was, was when it was made. You'll see we have the uh, Glock adjustable sights that Mr. Glock had to develop over a weekend so he could import the pistols. Basically you have a point system for importing pistols and you had to have a trigger, the way the, way the trigger was on these, and more compact ones had to have serrations on it to be called a target trigger. But the, the Glock 17 had to have these polymer uh, polymer target site adjustable site, which as soon as the guns came to the United States, these were taken off and they were putting on the combat sites. Okay. 
uh, as we as we as we originally spoke about the, the recoil springs, they always utilize the flat recoil springs. However, the original ones were not captive. The slides, it's actually very easy to see when you even look and you feel the difference between the finish uh, on the NDLC versus the original Tenefer. In fact, the original Tenefer, uh, you used to, hear, used to hear stories of Austrian soldiers who were sharpening their knives on these slides. That's how hard the finish was. It was nearly diamond finish. And of course, NDLC is a more modern finish that's utilized both in Austria as well as in the United States. The original Tenefer was a cyanide-based finish that uh, could not be done for EPA reasons in the United States ever. And the guns that are made in the United States and the guns that are made in Austria are made the exact same way. So any changes that were made in the United States were done in Austria as well. So again, looking at the frames, uh, the biggest difference you can see is the P80 frame has a lower shelf basically on here of where you had the pebbling. So it's certainly identifiable. Uh, you also have... On the, on the original Austrian guns, you have proof marks that are also on the frame, which you don't have on the, the current production. Now, you can definitely see that there's a little bit difference between the newer one versus the, the, the older one. The newer one, you can see there's a little bit more beefed up material on the frame on the front here versus the, versus the original one. So, again, the, the P80 that you see now, the retro, is not the same. It does have a lot of updates on it to make the gun more durable uh, than the original pistol. Not that there's any real durability issues, but the, they made a lot of modifications to the, uh, the frame to increase the strength of the frame. And it's very easy to see the differences when you, when you look at material. The one you have on the right, on my right here, is the, is the newer P80 versus the Gen 1. You can see the differences in the locking block. You can see the differences in the just the amount of material, the way that the, the frames are made. And of course, you can also see the differences in the way that the serial number tab is in there as well. This has gone through modifications over the year of the serial number tab for uh, forensics purposes and for law enforcement purposes of being able to track pistols. The original pistols, it was very easy to remove that tab on the original frames. Uh, that was changed uh, in later generations to prevent that from being so easily removed. Of course, you only look at the, the, the mechanism in the rear, it basically has changed very, very little over the years. But you have had improvements to the locking block over the years. Uh, so there are parts that are on the Gen 1 that are, that are obsolete that didn't, they didn't convert over to later generations. For reassembly, the same. They're both the same, of course. Now, part of the trigger updates had also to do with the frame pin safety as well as the trigger bar and the, uh, the, the whole mechanism. And uh, that was something that was carried over to, you know, to all guns. If you have an earlier gun that doesn't have those uh, those updated parts, that's really a collector's item, believe it or not. Uh, the gun that was less durable and when they had the problems is, is it's original. So that's uh, by far more desirable. The P80 comes in at a really good price at six sixty nine dollars retail. However, street prices tend to be up around 1000 And that has a lot to do with the availability. Now there's an initial run, it's supposed to be 10,000 pistols for the P80. Uh, the first 5,000 were delivered a few weeks ago. And within the first day or two, those were all gone. Uh, the first 5,000. The next 5,000 is supposed to be sometime towards the end of the year. Now my guess is, is this is going to sell really, really well and Glock's probably going to do more, but I can't say for sure. Now I was very fortunate to get this one. Uh, Brandon over at the gun room was able to score two of these, uh, so I was able to get one. Uh, and he's got one for himself, uh, but again, these have have gone really, really quick. With the price being six seventy retail, this is not what you would call a uh, over you know an over cost uh, for it. So somebody who wanted to buy these, this wouldn't necessarily have to be a collector's pistol. If they happen to like the way the grip felt and whatnot, they'd be able to use this as a carry gun as a target gun. Uh, it's not like a you know the Sig, for instance, where you had a retail of four hundred or so or five hundred or so for the standard, and if you wanted to get the military version, you were looking at well over a thousand. So that's not really the case. So this pistol could be used as a regular shooter or a carry gun or concealed gun, or it could be used as a collector's gun, you know, for that price. Now, for as far as the logos are concerned, anytime a manufacturer does a retro or a duplicate of a military pistol, there's bound to have to be some changes because they need to be able to differentiate between the actual military gun versus the, uh, the commemorative. 
Now, that can be done in a couple ways. For instance, uh, the Beretta M9 Special Edition. Uh, that was noted by the, the difference in the serial number range on the frame and the slide. Uh, the PB on the left-hand side, excuse me, the right-hand side, the PB, the font was different on the PB. It was stylized commercial uh, versus the, the military Gothic. Uh, in the case of the SIG uh, M17, uh, the main change was the, was the, change, the serial number range as well as the missing of the P mark for the proof mark on the slide and the barrel. On the Glock pistol, there was a couple different ways this was done. On the Austrian military pistols, right on the slide uh, before the PA, you would have had a circle with an upside down triangle that also would be on the frame right next to where Glock was. Uh, I've never seen an actual Austrian military pistol to know how the barrel was marked. The barrel here is basically is marked the same way the Gen 3 barrels are with the addition of the P80 on the side as a standard Gen 3 P80 barrel. So there was an expectation that there was going to be some changes from the original. And the air change from the original, the original PD pistols did not have, uh, as previously stated, a serial number plate on here. The serial number was on the slide and on the barrel. Now, the one disappointment was is I would have thought that Glock would have been able to put the proof marks the way the Gen 1 had on the sides. Uh, so this looks more like just a Gen 3, where if you look at the Gen 1, you would have the different proof marks on the side of the, the barrel and on the frame. Uh, as well as on the uh, slide. So those proof marks were not there. So again, uh, we definitely could tell this was not meant to be a exact rendition. It was meant to be uh, more of a commercialized one. Now this thing comes with some neat stuff uh, in the case. They did come with the original Tupperware container. Interestingly enough, the, this is the Gen 3 with the finger grooves on here rather than the original one. The original Glock 17 Tupperware container would have a space in here where they would be able to have 18 rounds of 9mm ammunition. Now we can see what the hole is here. This hole is very interesting because the original ones, the pistols had to be decocked when inserted into here. Due to the fact that there was a lot of accidental discharges because people had to pull the trigger to put them in here, they made it so now you can put the pistol in and have the, the trigger not be pulled. Now the whole reason for this hole right here was when these originally were made in Austria, there was a rod that went through to secure them. Uh, so you would have all these Tupperware containers all lined up in a rod that would go through and that would hold everything secure. So that was the whole point of that. Now when you look at the magazines, it did come with two magazines. And you have a Gen 5, uh, well I refer to them as sissy loaders here to load the magazines. You do have your cleaning rod, your cleaning brush, and you also have the mandated trigger lock. The original Tupperware containers, you know, that was prior to having the, the mandate of having the trigger locks. Now when you take a look at the case, you have a case that has the rendition of the original Glock P80 pistol with a very, very short history. We also have your typical your operator's manual, and you have a certificate of authenticity. And it uh, has guest and Glock signature on there with a brief history of what this pistol is. So you do get a very nice presentation case. So yeah, you know, we look at who the market is for this. Well, first off, you're going to have your your Glock collectors, which is what I am. Uh, you know, personally, uh, I love the Glock 17, the original pistol. I have a Gen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So naturally, I went after the P80. I also got one of the G17 uh, M pistols uh, for the commemorative, which was also done by Ellipses, and I also have a Model 17 uh, cutaway. So you know, as a collector, you're definitely going to buy this. Now, as somebody who just likes this this frame. A shooter, a target shooter, they're going to buy this as well. So collectors, as well as you can have this for just regular shooting, as I previously said, because of the cost of it, you know, uh, this can be bought as a regular shooter. Now, taking a look at the slide on here, uh, this is a gen, this is basically a Gen 3 slide. It does have a new NDLC finish on. As we said, we couldn't do anything, they couldn't do anything with the original uh, tenant for finishes due to environmental uh, reasons. So this was basically the uh, the newer type finish that we have. Now, the original tenant for finish that they had, Austrian troops with their PDs were known to use uh, the slides to sharpen their knives, which is an indication of how hard these uh, these slides were with the, uh, the tenant for finish that was on it. Now, like any other pistol, this basically being a Gen 3, you can upgrade this pistol to any way that you would want. So for the person who wants this as a shooter, you can add any sights to it, any tr any trigger you want to it. Uh, basically, anything you can do to any Gen, Gen 1 through uh, th through 3 Glock, you can you can put onto this. For as far as the slide is concerned, as I said, we can do anything for as far as the sights. The one thing you don't have is an accessory rail here, so you're not going to be putting any kind of a flashlight or any kind of a laser mounted to it. That's pretty much the only thing you're not going to be able to do with this versus a newer pistol. Now, those of you who uh, who like the Gen, the Gen 1 pistol, now the Gen 1 pistols, there was very few of these that were brought into the country. 
and the ones that you do find generally right now are extremely worn. Uh, this particular Gen 1, I have uh, sort of a neat story behind it. Um, I went home f uh, for a visit uh, to my family in New York and went to the gun shop that I worked at when I was in college. And I just happened to see this in there. Uh, this just came from an estate sale. This was a brand new 1986 Glock 17 that was never fired. This was an unfired specimen. So I was extremely excited when I saw it. It came with the original manual. It did not have the original case with it, which I didn't really care about. But we had an unfired version. So basically I bought it and had it transferred here to Texas. And that's how I finally got the Gen 1 that I'd always wanted. But uh, these are occasionally available. They're generally relatively expensive. Uh, especially if you can find ones that are in good condition. Uh, it's not too hard to find uh, some old, mil old old police ones where you would have uh, the, you know, the police department's uh, uh, you know, their initials that are on there for the police department or whatnot, but they're generally very, very worn. Still serviceable and still fireable, but the, service, but the condition of them is pretty rough. But basically what you have here with the P80 is certainly the same spirit of what the original Gen, was, Gen 1 was, but you have a lot of the updated uh, safeties on there. You have uh, some of the updated you know, components and finishes on the internals. Now, there's going to be no firing in this vi in this video, test firing or anything, whatnot, because, again, I bought this as a collector's pistol, and I don't expect there to be anything out of the ordinary with any other Glock. So we just wanted to show this as a, uh, it, it, what it was for the commemorative purposes, and, you know, for, and for me, uh, it's just as a collector's pistol. Now, we definitely want to put a call out to Lipsies and thank them for taking the effort to do this. To my understanding, this was a two-year project with Glock. Glock has never done any kind of retro-type pistols. I think they're now starting to see that there's a lot of interest in what they did in the earlier days. You know, there was a lot of work that went into this on both parts of Glock and Lipsies. Um, Lipsies was able to get a limited number of these. Uh, they've also had some other... Uh, projects with Glock, for instance, the 17M, that was also a, uh, a Ellipses project, project that they had with with Glock. You know, Glock had to do some more, do some work on this. Uh, you know, the primary thing they had to do was the work on the frame with, with building new molds. They didn't have any of their older molds left. But for as far as the slide was concerned, it's a standard slide we have now, Gen 3 slide. Uh, just changed the roll marks. It's the same internals as the Gen 3. Uh, but a lot of work was done on the, on the packaging. As you previously said, they're saying limited edition. 10,000 pistols, 5,000 were delivered, 5,000 more coming later at the, end, at the end of this year. But uh, as I said, I do expect to see more. Uh, That's my guess. So I hope you all enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.